the list macromolecule nucleic acid. Now we've learned about proteins early in this chapter and we know that proteins are, you know, are definitely very important in our body. It, it makes our body function as well. But there would be no proteins without nucleic acids. So the amino acid sequence of a polypeptide is programmed by a unit of inheritance called a gene. Genes consist of DNA, a nucleic acid made of monomers called nucleotides. So because uh, nucleic acids um, you know, consist of monomers, so that's why we consider them as um, polymers. And the monomer for nucleic acid, both DNA and RNA, are called nucleotides. Right? So here is the nucleotides. Okay. So this is the structure of one nucleotide. So you can see the three components of a nucleotide. So you have a phosphate group, a pentose sugar, and also a nitrogenous base. Okay. So um, there are two types of nucleic acids. So we have a deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA and ribonucleic acid or RNA. So the DNA provides direction for its own replication. And also DNA directs the synthesis of messenger RNA or mRNA and through mRNA it controls the protein synthesis, right? So basically uh, your DNA would store your genetic information and this genetic information would be translated into proteins that, that makes our body functions. Okay, so this is the, the, the comparison between uh, pentose sugar present in both DNA and RNA. So why do we have two different nucleic acids? Okay. So the reason why we have two different nucleic acids is because they differ. One of the difference is that they have two different pentose sugar. So pentose sugar means they have five carbon sugar. Okay. So this is the pentose sugar that we have in our DNA and it is called deoxyribose. Okay, and this one is called ribose. So this pentose sugar is present in RNA. So can you find the difference between the two? So it definitely looks the same. Both are pentose sugar, but one different is at carbon number two. So you can see at carbon number two in the deoxyribose, it's missing or it's lacking one oxygen, right? So that's why the name deoxy. Okay, deoxy means it, it's missing one oxygen at carbon number two, right? So for this one, if you look at carbon number two, okay, you can see it has hydroxyl there. So that means it has an oxygen at carbon number two. So that's why the name is simply ribose. Okay, so that is the um, uh, the number one, okay, uh, different between uh, DNA and RNA, okay? The presence of two different pentose sugar in the structure. Nucleic acids are polymers, I've mentioned this just now, and they are called polynucleotides. And each polynucleotide is made of monomer called nucleotides. Each nucleotide consists of three components. Okay, I also mentioned this uh, uh, just now. And the, the, the three components are nitrogenous base, a pentose sugar, and also a phosphate group. So please remember the three components of our nucleotides. The portion of a nucleotide without the phosphate is known as nucleoside. So if we have uh, you know, two components, means if we have only nitrogenous base and the sugar without the phosphate, so this is known as nucleoside. Right, so don't get confused with a nucleotide and nucleoside. Okay, so they are definitely different different things. So this shows a polynucleotide, right? So and we have a few things that we need to uh, look at here, right? So the first one is obviously uh, the monomer of, of, of the polynucleotide here is the nucleotide, okay? Uh, and we have discussed uh, the components of nucleotide, okay? So and we also have uh, looked at the two uh, different pentose sugar, okay, just now. All right, and then we have uh, some of the other characters here. Okay, number one is that polynucleotide runs in different uh, different ends. It means that uh, one end over here is called the five prime end. Okay, we call it five prime end, and the other end is called the three prime end. So why does 
you know, this polynucleotide would have two different ends. Okay, the two different ends is due to the uh, to the orientation of the uh, of the nucleotides themselves. Okay, so if you see here, the phosphate group. So the yellow brown structure here is the phosphate group. So the phosphate group here attached to the fifth carbon. So if you can number a uh, put number to the carbons here. So this is number one, two, three. Sorry for that very bad handwriting. And this one is number four and this one is number five. So that you can see the, the first functional group that you can see at this end, it is actually attached to the fifth carbon of the pentose sugar. So hence the five prime. And if you look over on the other end, you can see the hydroxyl group here and it attaches to the third carbon of the pentose sugar. So that's why we call this as three prime n. So that's how we actually read DNA sequence. We read them as we read them from five prime to three prime, right? Okay, and also uh, you can see the sugar phosphate backbone over here. So the sugar phosphate backbone, which is uh, you know this one in the blue background here. So the repetition of um, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, and so on and so on. So these are known as the sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, so we call it sugar phosphate backbone because this part only consists of repetition of sugar and sugar and phosphate, sugar and phosphate. So hence the sugar phosphate backbone, right? Okay, now we're going to look at, at the nitrogenous base. So, so far we have looked at uh, the pentose sugar. I don't think we can, I don't think we need to discuss more on phosphate group. You know, we have discussed phosphate group in functional groups. Everyone now know, okay, uh, you know, what phosphate group is. Now we're going to look at the nitrogenous base. Okay, so nitrogenous base, uh, so we have two families of nitrogenous base. So we have pyrimidines. Okay, pyrimidines, um, uh, is a, it is a single six-membered ring. Okay, and the bases under the family of pyrimidines are cytosine, pyrimine, and uracil, or C, T, and U. So you can see the structure of C, T, and U. Okay, so it has this six-membered ring. It's a single, it's a single ring. Okay, and it has a six carbon here, six carbon, single ring. Okay, so C, T, U. So thymine can only be found in DNA, and uracil can only be found in RNA. Okay, and the second one is purines. So purines is six-membered ring fused with a five-membered ring. So you can see the structure here. So basically, it has a double ring here. So one ring is five carbon, and the second one is six carbon. So this is what we call as purine. So we have two base two bases under the family of purine. So the first one is adenine and the, the second one is guanine. So this is very important for you to memorize. You need to remember the two families, the pyrimidine and the base uh, under it and also uh, purine, right? So I think it would be very, I think it's, it's quite easy to memorize. Okay, CTU, okay, are pyrimidines, A and G are purines. All right, now we're going to look at the covalent bond that attach uh, all the nucleotides together in a polynucleotide strand. So the name of the covalent bond is the phosphodiester bond. Okay, phosphodiester bond. So this is a type of a covalent bond between adjacent nucleotides. So now you need to look carefully in the diagram. So we have two adjacent nucleotides here. So I'm going to, let's say I'm going to uh, name this as nucleotide one. And this one is nucleotide 2. Okay, right. So the covalent bond formed between the hydroxyl group on the third carbon of one nucleotide and the phosphate on the fifth carbon on the next. Right, so now you can see okay, where the phosphodiester bond uh, is. So it is already highlighted uh, and showed to you. Okay, but I'm trying to, you know, uh, simply and briefly uh, show you how it formed. All right, so you can find them between the third carbon uh, on the on the first nucleotide. So this is the third carbon. Okay, originally you would have a hydroxyl here. Okay, originally. Okay, originally you have hydroxyl there, and on the phosphate. Okay, on this one, 
okay it is also actually hydroxyl so you have two hydroxyl over here so one hydroxyl is actually attached to the carbon the third carbon and another hydroxyl is actually attached to the phosphate so um, again this is uh, going to involve condensation process meaning removal of water right so you need to remove one hydro the hydroxyl here okay and also hydrogen here so together you're going to form one water molecules I'm sorry for that very bad handwriting okay um, so what's left here is the oxygen so this oxygen is going to attach to the carbon the third carbon all right so this is what we call as what is what is this this is an ester bond ester bond yeah okay now because the name is phosphor diester bond so di means two so where is the other one where is the other ester bond so the other one okay the other ester bond is over here so you can see again this is also c and o Oops, sorry so c and o is also an ester bond over here oh my gosh c ester okay and then we have phosphate in the middle hence phosphor diester bond so that's how we got the name uh, the covalent mean the covalent bond as phosphor diester bond all right so i hope you get that okay so the chain of nucleotide has a five prime to three prime orientation so i did show you in the previous slide okay why do we say it has a five to three prime uh, orientation okay and the backbone is negatively charged because of the negative charge on the phosphate group so because of the backbone it consists of repetition of uh, sugar phosphate and sugar phosphate so because phosphate is negative uh, has negative charge so that makes our dna would be negative charge as well it's due to the uh, negative charge of the phosphate yeah okay All right Okay, so we know that um, DNA is a double-strand molecule. I believe everyone knows that. Okay, and DNA is actually a double-stranded molecule and also uh, exists in alpha helix form. Yeah. All right. So uh, DNA double helix has two polynucleotide strands spiraling or coiled together around an imaginary axis and forming a double helix structure. Okay, it's form a double helix structure. So the two backbones in a DNA double helix would run in opposite direction, okay, uh, five to three prime direction from each other, and we refer this as anti-parallel, okay. So you can see the two strands over here. So this strand would run from five to three, okay, and on the other strand, okay, the the pairing strand would run anti-parallel. Anti-parallel means opposite direction. So it runs from 3 to 5. Okay. All right. So that's why we call it the two strands are anti-parallel. Okay. And between the base, because we have two strands, so there would be um, interaction between the bases. Okay. So uh, the interaction uh, would be between uh, uh, the bases. So usually we, we uh, pair up. Uh, cytosine and guanine and also adenine and thymine okay so these base pair are joined together by hydrogen bond so in dna itself okay you have two uh, chemical bonds present in the structure so you have the phosphodiester bond remember last uh, you know the previous slide phosphodiester bond would uh, you know connects and, and join nucleotides in one polynucleotide strands. Meanwhile, hydrogen bond can be, far, can be found uh, between the base pair between two different polynucleotide strands. Okay. So one DNA molecule includes many genes. Um, the nitrogenous base in DNA pair up and form hydrogen bond. Okay, I did mention this just now. Okay, where the, the adenine always pair up with thymine always okay always and guanine always pair up with cytosine it cannot be another you know like g and a or g with a or t with c it cannot be like that okay and this is called complementary base pairing so why this pairing is is fixed right it is fixed because the structure of uh, these bases are complementary to each other 
Okay, so the shape of the, the structure of adenine is complement to the thymine. Uh, the shape of guanine is complementary to the cytosine. So because they are complementary to each other, so that's why they are pair up. You know, they can pair up together and, and connected by hydrogen bond. Okay, so this is the pairing between the, uh, the bases. So you can see thymine, uh, thymine is pyrimidine and pair up with uh, with adenine which, which is a purine remember purine has double ring pyrimidine has single ring and like i said just now be, due to the structure due to the complementary structure okay thymine and adenine able to form two hydrogen bond okay two hydrogen bond yeah two hydrogen bond oopsie Okay, all right, and, and the second one, the second pair is between cytosine and guanine. Okay, so as you can see, okay, the complementary structure uh, between cytosine and guanine uh, would, uh, you know, would form three hydrogen bond. Okay, three hydrogen bond. Okay, so you can have three hydrogen bond between, oops. Okay, between cytosine and guanine. Okay, so and this one is also very important to you for you to remember. Please do so. Okay, moving on. All right, so um, this would be the structure of a D, of the DNA that we have we have you know discussed just now. Okay, the double helix of our DNA, and this is one example of RNA. Okay, uh, one example of RNA is transfer RNA or tRNA. Okay, so it looks like this is uh, is like a double strand, but don't uh, you know like <laughs> don't uh, be confused. Okay, this is actually only one strand, but because of the interaction, okay, uh, of the hydrogen bonds there, so it looks like they have um, uh, a double strand, there, but it's actually only uh, a single strand here. Yeah. Alright, so now we're going to look at the differences between RNA and DNA. So we have a few here. So the first one, RNA consists of single strand only. Alright, and then they also much shorter than DNA. Meanwhile, in, in DNA, they consist of double strand and they are arranged in anti-parallel manner and also coiled around. So the second difference is uh, that RNA uh, consists of pentose sugar called ribose. Meanwhile, for DNA, okay, we have deoxyribose. So I hope you guys still remember how to differentiate between ribose and deoxyribose. Yeah, right. And the th and the third one, um, the bases. Okay, the bases in RNA we have uracil. Okay, ure uracil. So that means here we have bases of A, G. C and U. So there will be no thymine in RNA sequence. Meanwhile, in DNA, okay, you don't have uracil but you have thymine. So that means the bases in DNA are A, G, C, and T. So you won't find any U or uracil in DNA sequence. Okay, number four, uh, you can uh, RNA is produced uh, in the nucleus but you can find them anywhere in the cell, in, in mostly in cytoplasm. Okay, and DNA found almost entirely in, in chromosomes in within our nucleus. And you can also found some of them, okay, in mitochondria and also chloro and chloroplasts because uh, these two organelles also do have their own DNA. Okay, number five, uh, we have three types of RNA. So we have messenger RNA or mRNA. We have transfer RNA or tRNA and ribosomal RNA or rRNA. But we only have one DNA. All right, number six, um, RNA possess smaller nuclear mass, about 20,000 to 2 million bases. Meanwhile, DNA would possess larger molecular mass around 100,000 to 150 million bases. So you can see that DNA is definitely larger compared to RNA. And the last one, the function, RNA does not act as a gene, okay, but they 
play important role in protein synthesis. So we're going to see how RNA uh, plays their role uh, in protein synthesis next semester. So we have a long way to go. Uh, and DNA act uh, in a, and DNA okay possess uh, nucleotide site, nucleotide sequences that encode genes, right? And the genes in DNA. Uh, it's a union of genetic information. So basically, our DNA stores our genetic information. All right, you guys. Um, that's all for nuclear acids, I, I believe. All right. Okay, guys. So you can see all the macromolecules that we have learned in this chapter. It seems a lot, but uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is a lot. <laughs> uh, but no worries. Um, I think you would have no problem uh, with all